I'll try to uh, present an important change that we are trying to achieve at school. Um, you might say, because you know, uh, there are always some changes in schools, so what's the difference here? Um, we will watch, uh, we will see it together. Uh, I've got a video to show you first, but before that, there's a simple statistic that I would like to share with you. Well, we are living in a uh, very rapidly changing world. Six, and this data is from two different uh, points of time, you know, years. Probably you can guess 6.6 .6 billion to 7.7 .7, uh, billion. That's the population of the uh, world. And the increase is 17%, ladies and gentlemen. And another uh, statistic is uh, something has increased from 0.1 billion to 5 billion. In other words, from 100 million to uh, 5 billion. That is a uh, number of YouTube videos watched per day. Look, compared to uh, the increase in population, that is huge. And uh, that tells us something. You know, the way we live, um, we, we use YouTube for a lot of things. And I'm, th I'm sure that's not a shocking news for you. You know, uh, now for fun, to uh, have news um, uh, to learn. <coughs> so uh, the way we live, the way we do things are changing. As human beings, you know, uh, it is changing. But there is one thing that uh, as human beings we are struggling to change. And the video is about that. Let us watch the video first. The teacher stands at the front and the students watch and listen. You'll recognise this because it's probably how you were taught and how your parents were taught before you. But there are a lot of problems with this approach to teaching. You see, not all students learn at the same speed. So some get left behind. And while some students learn better by listening, others may learn better by doing. This means that teachers can't always do the best job they can. But there is another way. The flipped classroom addresses these problems and makes learning more personal. First, the teacher makes a video that delivers the content they'd usually teach in class. Then they share it online with students who can watch it before the next lesson. This leaves the teacher free to spend class time leading activities that help students apply the knowledge. Students can rewind and re-watch a video as many times as they like and come back to class with questions for the teacher. So keeping up with the class is no longer an issue. Students can access the video at any time using mobile devices, giving them the ability to learn more independently. Instead of sitting and listening, students can spend class time applying knowledge in more practical ways. And teachers are free to spend their time working with students and giving them individual support and attention. The flipped classroom model is already making a difference to students and teachers worldwide. So get involved. Discover more at flippedinstitute.org and become part of the movement. I'm sure you like it. And I'm sure uh, nobody's confused uh, when we say flipped classroom. We're not talking about this. We're not flipping that way. What we do with a flip, uh, flip classroom is basically you change the function of the locations. Uh, what is used to do uh, for students at school now is in class. What they used to do in class is, is now in, uh, done at uh, home. So it says basically, as you can see, we got a traditional method um, 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 technique that we use. Lecture students, you know, uh, content delivery, in other words, when they're in class, and you just let them go home, all right, and practice it. Apply the information, apply the knowledge they learn. But uh, in this model, you ba basically, students in the, uh, in the flip model, students get the content, uh, you do the content delivery through a video when they are at home. When they come to class, they practice it. And I do support this idea because anything can be done by a computer. I say, let the computer do. Why? Because a teacher is uh, more than a computer and he or she can do a lot more than a computer can do. 
So, uh, well, so you might ask, uh, what uh, does this uh, have to do with us? Uh, you know, uh, the, uh, with the success in fighting uh, the spread of COVID-19, uh, you know, schools opened, we could easily go back to normal. But there are problems with the normal, uh, because we know that the normal that we have in school, in schools, generally speaking, are not working properly. And if you, you can say for some students, it's falling apart. And I think it's the right time to ask this question, should we go back to normal or should we have a new normal? Uh, so this, this presentation is about that. Well, uh, during those remote learning days, although, you know, that was a sad experience and a challenging, difficult experience for everyone, you know, uh, stressful as well, uh, we all together experience something and we believe that in that sad experience there are some good things that we can take for future for the future what are they look uh well what we can say you know when we were doing this remote learning uh parents one way or another uh get more engaged uh with students uh, learning so uh, the remote learning, distance remote learning, uh, uh, brought us more engagement around for parents around students' learning. And obviously, needless, uh, needless to say, teachers had to upskill themselves because they had to challenge themselves. You know, uh, as teachers, uh, we're very confident, we're very comfortable teaching in classroom, but all teachers were forced to step out uh, of their comfort zone and try to continue teaching your children on a different um, uh, medium on long, uh, online learning and most importantly I think uh, it has offered an opportunity for our students to take um, uh, 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 to be more responsible for their own learning because there was no teacher next to them when they were home when they were responsible for their own learning. We're talking about content. Okay, so, uh, when we look at it, the benefits and the old normal, uh, we, as school, we refuse to go back to old normal and there where blended learning comes in. And the beauty of blended learning is basically combining best practices of these two you know classroom learning and online learning and it aims to uh, combine the best and beautiful parts of these two um, models if we uh, so if you ask this question then what's blended learning this is the definition um, we could use blended learning is a form of education program in which a student learns at least in part through online with some element of student control this part is important with uh, some element of student control over time place and pace so this is how they define blended learning the most important part is the last part some element of student control well we usually control our students don't we and you usually control your children. So um, this is the exciting part. Well, uh, if you uh, remember, we start with flipped classroom. Uh, now we're talking about blended learning. Blended learning has many different models. Um, so uh, one of them is flipped classroom. And we intend to enter this new world, uh, this major change into this major change through blended learning because this is what I advised. So uh, then, when you just look at the um, the uh, blended learning, what we're talking about videos through flipped classroom. Okay, so uh, you can also read it yourself. There are a lot of good things for students, such as move at own pace. So um, people are different and students are different. They've got the different strengths and weaknesses. 
some slow, some not. And um, if you want to look at here, you know, engage. You say, if you're talking about video that they need to watch, it's not like NAV that you have to uh, listen to me. By the way, I think I forgot to say this, but it's important. We are uh, video recording this session uh, for the parents who couldn't come to uh, this session, and we're going to um, upload that to our channel. So if someone decides to jump on the stage, you can be on YouTube <laughs> tomorrow. Uh, like, uh, being on YouTube is not a bad thing, but let me just inform you <laughs> if you come over this area. Okay, so uh, the good thing with our uh, videos, uh, delivering content through uh, videos, students also engage when they think they're most alert, when they think they're most ready for it. And you can take a break. But it's a little bit difficult in class situation. Okay, I, I've, I've tried to uh, summarize the benefits of what we're trying to achieve. Uh, we call it Fountain College Blended Learning Model. Um, so uh, it's, uh, it is a major radical change. Like uh, at the start of the session, we talked about changes every school, all school, and we had some changes in the past as well, but this is different because it, it aims to change teaching and learning radically. So uh, it's not a superficial change, we're talking about a radical change in our teaching and learning system. So uh, the, uh, I call it beauties, videos of uh, blended learning. So uh, we have pace. Like we, uh, we mentioned, students learn at different uh, speeds. So some slow, some uh, fast. But through video recording, when you watch it, you can watch it at your own uh, pace. Uh, you can learn at your own pace. That's one. Second, preparedness. And there is an article, I think, uh, you know, on the bench over there next to the uh, um, door. Before you leave, I suggest uh, take a look at it because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's about one of the schools who implemented blended learning. Um, and, and they talk about how students um, prepared, get prepared for the lesson. So preparedness, what we mean by that, um, when a student watches videos before they come to class, they come with some pro, uh, basic knowledge. So they know what's going to happen. And also, uh, they've got some questions already. And uh, also, I think we help them with developing skills for planning ahead. So, you know, this is going to happen in your class, prepare yourself. It takes time, what we're talking about, uh, uh, mind shifting here. So control, like in the definition of blended learning model, I think this is the most important part. Um, we give some element of control to our students. And I think it's something that we have to challenge ourselves with because uh, we usually prefer to give instructions, direct instructions to students, like um, do this question, uh, close your book, go to corner, come back here and everything, right? Uh, but life is not like that. You don't get uh, the instructions all the time. And it's very difficult to teach students to be independent, which is the next part, uh, and, and, and uh, move wi uh, wi without getting instructions. Do work without getting instructions. And that has been a little bit uh, frustrating for us. With the current system, it's a little bit difficult. We just need to give them more responsibility, more autonomy, so that we can uh, help them develop um, these skills. Independence and 21st century skills, I'm going to mention that in my, um, uh, at the end of the presentation, so I'll skip that. For parents, uh, look, it is, uh, I'm sure uh, you would like to know what's happening in a school. Although we got school information system, we got, you know, uh, uh, social media accounts, but when it comes to uh, what's happening really in class in, in terms of core business, teaching and learning, it's uh, currently, it's difficult to keep you updated. But videos that will be shared with your um, uh, children will keep you in the loop and uh, will help you if you would like to help your children and you will be able to understand 
what they are learning. For us, uh, it's about transformation, transforming our school to something uh, else, something uh, futuristic. That's why we said a future focused. Uh, we may choose to become a traditional school, like most schools do, or we can take this challenge right now when we have the opportunity and be a future focused school and change the school culture you know, change the student profile because your children, uh, who are our students, raise in this environment, right? So uh, they get a lot from you, from the family, they got a lot from the school. And if you can change that school culture um, with some responsibility, independency, with 21st century skills, in this uh, culture, school culture, uh, we'll be able to raise better individuals successful individuals for uh, life. For teachers, um, they say it is uh, still teachers. The teachers are the uh, single most effective factor in students' learning. You know, not a school, not a parent, uh, not a resources, uh, not an environment, teacher. Uh, well, according to uh, research. So most single uh, effective factor is teachers and we need to ask this question do we use their time effectively or do they have to waste their time in class and they do uh, so through this model we are aiming to um, uh, make they make their time more efficient effective in class because you know curriculum delivery can be done anywhere anytime it doesn't have to be in class a teacher doesn't uh, need to spend 10, 15 minutes for every single lesson. So that's why we say for teachers, teaching to facilitating, teaching to supporting, because this is where you need a, a teacher. You know, um, a student can learn the information from a video, but a video cannot help the student. Uh, you need a human being over there, a qualified human being who is a teacher. So supporting, even coaching, uh, which is something to do uh, skill teaching, which we'll uh, mention at the end of the presentation. So uh, I uh, would like to say a few things about what blended learning is, what is not, so that uh, we don't have a wrong idea about it. When we say, look, uh, we've started this, or we are trying to achieve uh, this major change in school, uh, we're not saying that we will go online. All right, uh, so it will be still combination of online and classroom teaching. So that's one. Secondly, uh, we're not going to stop teaching in class just because we got videos. You know, uh, I say I'm teaching um, quadratic equations and I've got my video. I share that with my students. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to uh, teach or repeat that in my class. But we aim to do that for the ones who need that. Maybe the half of the class already understood it. Why do we need to waste my time in class, right? So uh, the teaching, specifically those, the, that teaching, will be done for, for only the ones who really need that. You know, some students need support. And it may change from topic to topic. You may be brilliant in this topic, but you've got some problems with this topic. So. Um, that's another, and another, uh, the last one I think that I can mention is um, uh, disadvantage. So we're not going to disadvantage anyone. Uh, so something, uh, and we did discuss about that, um, even with students, you know, uh, students asked some questions, we started some meetings with teachers and students, uh, students ask uh, these questions themselves, so look, uh, what's going to happen to, uh, um, students with limited uh, access to technology at home. So uh, that has got something to do with our school structure and our facilities and our you know, um, um, uh, infrastructure, which we are working on. So uh, we're not, uh, we will make sure that no students will be disadvantaged. We probably need to change the way we, uh, we, uh, we structure our classrooms. There might be a few computers or dedicated iPads for the ones who um, couldn't watch the video. 
but definitely it's something important because um, uh, speaking of student meetings, I remember one of the students asked this, uh, and I said this, uh, this and raised this argument. Look, uh, videos are great because uh, it's 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 uh, very difficult to um, um, ask questions many times about the same topic in the class because it's embarrassing. You know, uh, you know, you can ask a question and you can ask the same question second time, but uh, you feel a little bit embarrassed to uh, to ask the same question third time, right? But uh, and she said that it's great actually because you can just uh, watch it as many times you would like to watch it. It's up to you, just pause and come back. And also, uh, another important point, I think uh, Omar Raja will be, uh, would say that, but let me uh, say on behalf of him. Uh, for topics like, you know, say, uh, tricky, challenging, advanced topics, especially upper classes, we got exams. Uh, it's a great resource for students to prepare themselves uh, for exams. They can just go back, Video is over there. Teacher is not always with you, but video is over there. You can just watch it and 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 uh, and prepare yourself for the exam. So uh, we are going to, inshallah, provide facilities for everyone. So um, the, this is our school goals, and uh, since 2017, and and we're proud of it. I think that's uh, one of the biggest achievements. Uh, uh, for our school that we've done, why they are so important? Because you know, whenever we need to make an important change, uh, we just go back to school goals and check whether uh, they are in line with our goals. Having you know, right and important goals and sticking to your goals is very important. Uh, you don't want to keep changing your uh, goals, and you don't want your school to keep changing its goal because you can't go anywhere. Um, so, uh, well, the time 2017, I think they are still valid. Uh, we wanted to focus on improving norms and procedures for more effective learning and it keeps changing and it has got something to do with the current topic, blended learning. So I think, uh, you know, we just need to improve and change and procedures and norms in the class for effective learning. This is about literacy outcomes and reading comprehension, one weakness we noticed and we're working on it and since then uh, uh, we brought a lot of different programs to school and it's getting better. And the last two is directly related to this blended learning. We would like to in, uh, raise independent learners, but we cannot do that without uh, giving them some autonomy, giving them more responsibility. Otherwise it doesn't work, it's too difficult. And this one has got some, uh, 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 something to do with 21st century skills. Integrating the curriculum meaningfully for the real world outcomes so uh, this is this is probably uh, a topic for another uh, presentation, but it's very important because we know that you know teaching math, science, uh, English, and has and everything is our responsibility, and it's important for their future. You know, ATA scores are very important, uh, but we are we also know that. Teaching skills is very important. And I'm sure you would agree if I say uh, so there are some skills which help students um, 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 to be very successful, successful in life, uh, which is more, uh, more important than their knowledge. So skills play more important role in life, mostly than your knowledge. Uh, but that is a difficult target because, um, you know, teach for teaching those subjects, we got curriculum, uh, we got Australian curriculum, and we are very proud of that. It's a very good curriculum. But when it comes to teaching skills, when it comes to teaching, especially 21st century schools, um, it's, it's, it's difficult. So in the past, we tried a few different things, but without a good framework, it's very difficult to achieve that. Now there are some studies and works around that and we're still um, uh, monitoring and we're still working around and we we'll see if we can uh, find something useful for our school we would like to bring it uh, uh, to school so that we can teach your children some skills skills like this you know critical thinking creativity collaboration communication and look if you just look at these things uh, the way we collaborate work together the way we communicate is also changing right uh, 10 15 years ago 
There was no uh, Google Classroom. There was no social media. There was no um, emails, not like that, in at least. But uh, now uh, you can be in a face to face a good communicator, but when it comes to online mediums, are you good? So, uh, and this model, this initiative is actually uh, opening a lot of doors for us to, uh, to teach those skills. Uh, literacy skills is directly related to that, and life skills. So 21st century skills, uh, uh, I think, is, is, is a subject of another presentation. Okay, so uh, we have challenges. It's not an easy target. We are not just, um, you know, uh, obviously, blended learning is not just about this presentation, we're talking about people, we're talking about your children, we're talking about our teachers, we're talking about uh, things that we have been doing for a long time, and now we're trying to change it. It will take time. And uh, the role of the teacher, the role or, and the role and responsibilities of students, their mindset needs to uh, change, and it may take time. And uh, as it says here, requires buy-in from both, I would say all, including school, and parents as well. So school, parents, students, and teachers. Uh, unfortunately, we should be working, you know, very well about that. But if we can, when done right, thumbs up, beautiful. And I think improved academic results, so increased engagement is just, are just byproducts of it.